very much, Mr. Speaker. Um, I am grateful for the opportunity to be able to make a statement to the Assembly on the industrial action in the Health and Social Care Service and the work to hopefully bring this to an end. As this has been a fast-moving situation, I apologise to the Assembly for not providing the usually advanced sight of this statement. As this is my first time addressing the House as Minister, I want to take the opportunity to reassure the Assembly, Health and Social Care staff and members of the public that I absolutely recognise the challenges that are facing our health service. Too many patients have been waiting for far too long, and our staff, on which the health service is totally dependent, have become increasingly frustrated and demoralised. It is as a result of those daunting and unprecedented challenges that I stand in front of you as Minister. There is no issue more important than the health and well-being of our people, and I hope that by picking this department we were able to demonstrate our absolute commitment to tackling and resolving the difficulties that our health service is facing. Of course, whilst the problems are well known, we must not forget that each and every day our health service continues to perform extraordinary work in often incredibly difficult circumstances. That is why I especially wish to pay tribute to all our health and social care workers. There are over 70,000 people employed by the HSC and a similar number working in the independent sector. Their work is vitally important and I wish to thank each and every one of them for the talent, effort and dedication they bring, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. The circumstances, Mr Speaker, that led to the unprecedented industrial action by SS HSE staff on agen Agenda for Change Terms and Conditions were hugely regrettable. And I fully appreciate the frustrations and distresses which have led to that point. I know that it will have been extremely hard, the decision for many of those to take industrial action, but I understand the reasons why they did. I will shortly outline the measures that the Executive will take to try and bring the industrial action to an end, but I will begin by explaining the background. Agenda for Change is the national pay system for all NHS and HSC staff, with the exception of doctors, dentists and the more senior executives. It was introduced in 2004. A refresh of Agenda for Change was formally ratified at the NHS Staff Council in 2018, where it was agreed, in conjunction with trade unions, to implement a three-year pay deal covering the period from 1 April 2018 to 31 March 2021 as well as reform of the pay structure and changes to terms and conditions. In the absence of ministers, the Department of Health was unable to implement the three-year deal, as it was in the other parts of the UK. However, the Department has been engaging with HSC employers and trade unions on Agenda for Change refresh for Northern Ireland. At the end of 2018, a pay award, whilst not agreed with unions, was implemented. It mirrored the first of the three-year pay deal agreed in England. Basically, it was the same uplift, adding 3% to the pay bill, albeit from a starting point 1% lower than in England. Despite significant engagement throughout 2019, which included over 20 meetings between department, HSC employers and trade unions, no agreement was made with trade unions on the two-year 2019-2020 pay offer. Pay parity together with safe staffing, are the main causes of the current dispute. Two formal offers have so far been made for 2019 and 2020. However, these were both rejected by trade unions, as neither of them restored parity with England. Both the pay award for 2018-19, which added 3% to the pay bill, and the most recent offer made for this year, which would have added 3.1% to the pay bill, need to be viewed in the wider context of public sector pay in Northern Ireland, where pay increases were in the region of 1%. The developing pay dispute, together with trade union concerns on safe staffing, have caused the four larger, largest Agenda for Change trade unions in Northern Ireland, the Royal College for Nursing, Unilson, Unite and NIPSA, to commence formal balloting of their members for industrial action up to and including strike action. Ballots in favour of industrial action were passed by all four unions, and Unison commenced industrial action in late November, with action short of strike across a number of sites. 
This industrial action escalated across the region involving members of all four unions with a strike on the 18th of December 2019 and a further two days of strike action by the RCN on the 8th and 10th of January 2020 and Unison on the 10th of January. Importantly, members should also remain mindful that other agenda for change unions, unions are balloting or shortly intend to ballot their members. The industrial action caused the consolation of thousands of outpatient and elective appointments across Northern Ireland. And without resolution to this dispute, trade unions have stated that the action will escalate further. Three days of strike action by the RCN are scheduled on the 20th, 22nd and 24th of January, with further days scheduled in February and March. Pay parity has been a consistent theme throughout the industrial action. Over the last number of years, England and Wales, Scotland and Northern Ireland have each adopted a different approach to pay, resulting in the pay values no longer being identical in each of the four jurisdictions. Scotland's agenda for change pay values are higher than those in England, which in turn are higher than those in Northern Ireland. Northern Ireland's break in pay party with England occurred in 2015-16, following a decision in January 2015. Turning members and speaker to the resolution of the dispute, applying England's pay values to current pay scales in Northern Ireland with effect from the 1st of April 2019 will create pay parity with England. This is estimated to cost £109 million. The Department has, through a combination of in-year easements and successful bids for additional funding, been able to assemble £79 million, £50 million of which is non-recurrent funding to increase pay for this staff grouping for 2019-2020. Therefore, an additional £30 million is required to meet the costs of Agenda for Change Pay Parity with England in 2019-2020. A move to pay, pay parity will, of course, also have implications for our budget in future years. It should be noted that a further £67 million of recurrent funding will also be necessary in 2021 to support national living wage uplifts and if pay recommendations for other staff groups not covered by Agenda for Change, such as family health services and doctors and dentists' review body recommendations are to be met. A move to parity with England will not inherently address recruitment and retention problems in Northern Ireland. Whilst there are over 7,000 vacancies currently being recruited for in the HSC, the high number is due to a range of factors. For example, the outworkings of the transformation agenda and the creation of new staff mixes in HSC, the ever-increasing size of the workforce necessary to attempt to keep pace with the demands of a growing and ageing population and shortages of suitably qualified staff, which is not a problem which is unique to Northern Ireland. Mr Speaker, I should clarify that the funding of the £30 million cost to move to part in the current year is to be financed by drawing forward proposed allocations for future years. So while I am glad that it is not impacting on the funding, funds available for other services this year, it is important to note that, is, that it has not been financed by an additional allocation to Northern Ireland. Whilst pay is a factor in recruitment and retention, a more significant component as evidenced by the trade union focus on safe staffing is the pressure on staff across the HSC. Those will only be properly addressed by transforming the HSC and by fully implementing the actions in the Health and Social Care Workforce Strategy, which was published in 2019. In addition to pay, there is much to do on the refresh of Agenda for Change, and the Department is committed to working with trade unions on this. Of course, pay parity has been one element of the industrial action. But the Assembly will be aware that safe staffing has also been a very significant issue for unions during this dispute. And I want to provide some assurances today. The workforce strategy aims by 2026 to meet Northern Ireland's health and social care workforce needs and the needs of the health and social care workforce includes 24 actions under three objections, achieving the appropriate numbers and skills mix through training, commissioning, good workforce planning, provision of careers advice and the development of new roles. Ensuring that staff feel valued and rewarded and that the HSC is an employer and trainer of choice and by also improving business intelligence. 
The strategy which was Crewe produced with trade unions and others will, if implemented, greatly assist with maintaining safe staffing levels in Northern Ireland. In addition, the Department is developing options to reduce re reliance and spending on agencies and locums. Trade unions have, as part of the current dispute, also made a number of requests in respect of their view of what me measures are needed to address the safe staffing element of the dispute. I respect the fact that trade unions will only end the current dispute if pay parity is achieved and they are convinced that there is a workable plan to achieve safe staffing within a reasonable time frame. I therefore commit today that my officials will work urgently with all unions to produce a costed implementation plan for safe staffing within an agreed short period. Trade unions ask on safe staffing, asks on safe staffing will not be delivered immediately. This will be a long-term endeavour, but I hope that unions and staff will take assurance that the plan will be re realistic, that additional funding will be required, and that I will bring it to the executive for endorsement on that basis. <coughs> to sum up, Mr. Speaker, I believe the component parts are now in place to settle the industrial dispute. I presented a paper to executive colleagues this morning, and I am grateful to my fellow ministers for endorsing those proposals. Additional funding has now been secured. Pay parity with England can be restored. Our nurses and other great health and social care workers can come off the picket line, can get back to the job that they love and that they do so well. As this House would expect, I haven't wasted any time following today's executive meeting. I have immediately met with the trade union officials and briefed them on these latest developments. The new offer was outlined by me to trade union representatives this morning and will be formally submitted to them this afternoon. Officials will meet with trade unions tomorrow to agree on the detail. I am grateful to trade union leaders for the constructive meeting this morning. I appreciate that they have to go through their internal processes and I sincerely hope and believe trade unions will now bring industrial action to a swift end. To be clear, this new offer will reinstate pay party with England, and not just for this year. My department is providing a written commitment that will be maintained in 2020-21. Decisive action has also been taken on the vital issue of staffing, and my department is providing a written commitment to immediate high-level engagement with unions to produce a costed implementation plan on safe staffing within an agreed short period. The breakthrough that we all wanted has been achieved. This is a good day after some very difficult days. I am grateful to my colleagues around the executive table for helping to make it happen. We have moved significantly and quickly to take action together. That is a sign of optimism for the future. I know there is scepticism in many quarters about what this health minister and this executive can do for the health and social care service. That is entirely understandable. Many good people doubt whether we can set party politics aside and work constructively together. We shall see. But maybe, just maybe, today will give the sceptics some pause for thought. We have, of course, so much more to do. This has been a very challenging period for our health and social care services, but the situation was challenging before the industrial action, and it will continue to be for the foreseeable future. Sustained additional funding is essential, but there are no quick fixes. We can, however, provide hope and assurance to our workforce that the problems that they have been telling us about for so long will be addressed once and for all. This Assembly, the Executive, the Department and Trusts are not just hearing these concerns, but listening and acting. If devolution is to work, it has to deliver for our health service. So let's get on with it. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Okay, thank you, Minister. And I first call Colm Gildernew, Chairperson of the Health Committee. Gormar Agat, Kian Karlia, Agus Erdus, Bo Weichlom Fall.